please welcome CEO, Toyota Research Institute, Gil Pratt. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. And thank you to Bob Carter for that perfect lead-in to what I think you will all believe was a rather vivid opening statement. The three-car crash that you saw actually happened just as you saw it. We know this because we were there using an array of sensors and cameras. Our engineers at Toyota Research Institute captured a robust and diverse set of data to recreate what happened that day last summer. Our Lexus test vehicle was traveling in the leftmost lane in manual mode. The autonomy was disabled, but the perception system was fully active. It was mapping and gathering data at the many tunnels and bridges in the Bay Area. And luckily, despite the severity of the crash, no one was injured. We show you this now not to wow you with technology, but because I want to take you through a question that we posed to ourselves that very day. So here's the question. Could a future Toyota Guardian have prevented or mitigated the crash that you just saw? We believe that the answer is yes. So let me talk to you a little bit about what Toyota Guardian is all about. The essence of Toyota Guardian is about amplifying rather than replacing human ability. It's like giving dad his car keys back for a bit more time behind the wheel. Or even more importantly, it's about saving teenage lives where car crashes account for 30% of fatalities. It's about correcting for human mistakes and for human weaknesses and assisting the most vulnerable people at both ends of the age spectrum where far too many lives are lost. Now, from the beginning, TRI has been committed to a two-track approach to automated driving, simultaneously developing Toyota Guardian while working on level four and level five self-driving systems that we call Toyota Chauffeur. Now, Chauffeur is the kind of self-driving technology that all of you hear about in the press all of the time. Specifically, it's an approach that replaces the human driver with AI, with a machine. Level five chauffeur is defined as a system that's capable of driving anywhere, anytime, in any conditions, with no driver input. And that's a wonderful goal. Someday, we may achieve it. But it's really essential to not underestimate how hard a task chauffeur systems are, both technologically and also sociologically in many ways. For example, how do we train a machine about the social ballet required to navigate through an ever-changing environment, as well as or better than a human driver? How do we teach the systems to predict what a policeman means when they motion to you to stop at an intersection even though the light is still green? Or when a pedestrian will decide to cross the road? These are hard questions. Let's also keep in mind that it may take considerable time for society to accept the inevitable crashes, the inevitable injuries, and the inevitable fatalities that are still going to happen with chauffeur systems. Now, none of us, none of us in the automobile or IT industries are close to fully answering these questions. In the meantime, we all have a moral obligation to apply automated vehicle technology to save as many lives as possible as soon as possible. And that's why TRI's primary focus over this last year has been to concentrate most of our effort on Toyota Guardian, employing our unique dual cockpit control system. And with Guardian, the driver is in control of the car at all times except in those cases where the Guardian system anticipates a pending incident, alerts the driver, and decides to employ a corrective response in coordination with driver input. So in this way, Guardian combines and coordinates the skills and strengths of the human with those of the machine. In fact, one of the most significant advancements that we've made to Guardian this year was the creation of blended envelope control of both the human and the machine. We're inspired and informed by the way that modern fighter jets operate, where you have a pilot that flies the stick, 
But actually, the pilot doesn't fly the plane directly. Instead, the pilot's intent is translated by a low-level flight control system to stabilize the aircraft and stay within a specific safety envelope. So what's it feel like to have blended envelope control in a car instead of a fighter jet? Most of the time, the driver feels 100% in control of the car. However, as the driver begins to reach the edge of a dynamically changing safety envelope, the machine begins to collaborate with the human driver, nudging the driver back into a safe corridor. The big idea that we really want to drive home today is that envelope control, blended envelope control, it's not a discrete on-off switch between either the human and the machine, but rather it's a seamless blend of both human and machine working together as teammates, and we extract the best skills from each one. Guardian also adds this extra measure of oversight to future autonomous chauffeur systems that can be provided either by Toyota or by some other company. And we think this is a key capability because as we announced here at CES last year, we plan to include Toyota Guardian as standard equipment on all Toyota e-Pallet platforms that we build for the Moz or mobility as a service market. By doing so, Moz companies can use any autonomous chauffeur system that they choose with Toyota Guardian acting as a redundant check. What we talk about here is the Toyota version of belt and suspenders. We also expect that Guardian over time will build much needed trust and acceptance with the public. We call it Toyota Guardian, but actually we believe in it so much that we want to see it on every car that's on the road, not only Toyotas. In other words, guardian for all. Now let me talk a little bit here about how we are building guardian and how it works. One of the most important tools in the development of guardian is simulation. Our software can be tested in either a real car or a simulated one. And we can go back and forth seamlessly, allowing for continuous integration and testing. We run our code through simulation at an engineer's desk emulating how a car will respond on the road. And we can also scale this up and have many instances running in the cloud, simultaneously creating billions of miles of training data and of test data. But it turns out that simulation is actually not enough, because in order for Guardian to learn and to get smarter, it must be subjected to difficult corner cases and demanding scenarios that are simply too difficult to test either in simulation or on public roads. And this is one reason that we just built our own closed course facility at Michigan Technical Research Park in Ottawa Lake, not far from our Ann Arbor, Michigan facility. On closed courses, Guardian's intelligence and capabilities can be stretched and challenged through continuous refinement. Our Guardian systems learn how to best navigate and react to dangerous scenarios as they unfold. For example, in the demonstration that you see here, a vehicle suddenly pops out from behind a row of parked cars too quickly for any car to simply break in its lane. Sensing that the next lane is clear but only for a brief window, our guardian alerts the driver, visually and audibly, of the imminent danger, and then avoids the pop-out car by maneuvering out of the lane briefly and then quickly returning to the original lane to avoid the obstruction ahead. Now, this growing Guardian capability gives the I-80 incident that I opened with today, that vivid crash that you saw, an interesting lemons to lemonade twist. Here was an accidental corner case on a public highway, a dangerous three-car encounter that unfolded right before our eyes. From the data that we gathered, we first developed an accurate simulation, which we then translated into a learning tool for Guardian to perceive, to predict, and to plan the options that it had in a split second. We then recreated that same scenario on the test track using real vehicles and a guarded, guided, excuse me, soft target dummy vehicle. In this instance, Guardian's best option was to safely accelerate away from encroaching vehicles to avoid a collision. And furthermore, by accelerating out of the way, Guardian did this other thing, which was to help make space that might have prevented the other vehicles from crashing as well. In this way, we actually created a kind of an altruistic guardian 
which we think is a really neat idea. Now, next, I want to address an aspect of Guardian that makes the technology even more compelling. We human beings have an inherent desire for freedom of movement, similar to when we see a child first learn to stand up and giggle their way across a room without the help of mom or dad, similar to the smile of accomplishment that we see on the face of a child when they ride a bicycle for the first time without training wheels. I think you all know what I mean. So I want you now to imagine driving on a winding road similar to this challenging cone-lined slalom track that we did on one of our test tracks. With Guardian off, the driver can easily clip a cone. But with Guardian enable, the driver feels in full control, maneuvering the car like an extension of their selves, but with Guardian there to coach them and, if necessary, to catch them. If you're the driver, no matter what input you give, you neither oversteer nor understeer, and you never clip a cone. Now, we all know the joy of driving is real, and that joy is an inherent part of how we developed Guardian and why. We believe in the future of Toyota Guardian not only to save lives, but to make driving more joyful than ever. So a week from today in Detroit, we're going to proudly unveil the all-new Supra, gone but not forgotten for many years. Supra has always been Toyota's spiritual ode to the joy of driving. And I'm sure that those of you who are attending the show next week are going to be wowed. But in closing today, I have a little bit of wow for you as well to share from TRI. It's not so much a spiritual ode like the Supra as it is a whole new tool in the TRI toolbox. So today, it's my pleasure to share with you our newest guardian and chauffeur test bed, the TRI P4 research vehicle. Let's take a look. It's based on the Lexus LS500H. The P4 is smarter, more agile, and more responsive than any of its predecessors. It can process sensor inputs faster and react more quickly to the surrounding environment. This P4 will join the TRI test fleet in the spring of this year, further accelerating our development of both chauffeur and guardian. Now, this brings me to my last and perhaps most essential point. We think that the important benefit of automated driving is not actually about the autonomy of cars. It's about the autonomy of people. It's about saving as many lives as we can, as soon as we can, and making the experience of driving more fun as we make it safer. It's about the democratization of safety, the same philosophy that we pioneered nearly three years ago when we began providing automatic emergency braking as standard equipment in nearly every model and trim level that we sell in the US. And it's about the democratization of excitement, where we think even modestly priced cars can evoke the love of their owners. We believe that the crash that we experienced on Interstate 80 could have been mitigated or avoided altogether with Guardian technology. And as a result of that experience, and many others, we're developing Guardian, we'll build it, and today, for the first time, we're announcing that we're going to offer it as well to the industry. And that is what Guardian for All is all about. Thank you all for joining us today. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Before you go up on stage, please give our photographers a few moments to get some shots.